What's up, everybody? My name is Glenn Havely Jr., and I'm a current D1 at LSU School of Dentistry. I'm born and raised in New Orleans, and I got my undergraduate degree in 2015 from Prairie View A&M University. I got my degree in biology with a minor in chemistry. Um, since I graduated in 2015, I did have some gap years in between dental school, and I had the opportunity to play professional football for three years before dental school. Two separate occasions that really sparked my interest. My first one was my really good relationship that I have with my general dentist, Dr. Brandon Hagler. Um, every time I went in for my checkups, he always encouraged me to look into dentistry because he knew I was a young football player. He knew I had good attention to detail and I could work well with my hands. So eventually, in the summer while I was in undergrad, I started to shadow him, um, really getting the feel for things, seeing how a private practice is ran, um, how efficient he works, how he communicates, and how he really keeps a good, a good rapport with all of his patients. And that was the first thing that really encouraged me to look into dentistry a little bit further. The second opportunity, um, I was a part of LSU's School of Dentistry. I was a part of their summer enrichment program. Um, the summer enrichment program pretty much gave put us in dental school for a week. So we had lectures from professors about, you know, microbiology, histology. Um, we got to take impressions. We got to pour up cast, the whole nine. So pretty much through that experience, that's when I really was sold on dentistry and I could picture myself actually doing it. I knew it was possible. Um, also having a really good relationship with the professors and seeing how laid back they were, um, how I maintained a relationship with them for about 10 years leading up to me getting into dental school really sold me on the family aspect of dental school at LSU and, you know, feeling like a family, feeling like you can always reach out. Um, a lot of professors checked on me, asked me how my football career was going, um, how my family was doing, and that was really encouraging. For me, I started studying during the pandemic. Um, once my football career was put on pause, I was able to take some time out to study for the DAT, seeing if you know football season would come back. So I started studying for the DAT. I studied for about six, seven months during the pandemic, so I had a lot of time on my hands. Um, schedule was completely open. Um, but with me taking those gap years, about five, six years, um, without schooling, um, I probably went in on the the science portion for maybe two months straight. You know, just getting my feet wet. You know, with certain processes and getting back into general chemistry, which I really didn't remember, and getting into organic chemistry with all of those formulas that you have to remember. Once I got got once I got more comfortable with the sciences, I started to add into PAT, watching the videos, learning exactly how to answer these questions. And once I got comfortable with PAT, I would study science in the morning and then I would do PAT in the evening. You know, maybe knock out 30 questions, 40 questions before I go to sleep so I can keep that current practice. After um, I really got comfortable with PAT and the natural sciences, I worked in reading and math. Reading is kind of self-explanatory, but it still takes some practice. And math was kind of tough for me because I never was really great at math, but I was able to manage. Um, so for about, once I got to about the four or five month area in my studying, that's when I started really, you know, getting into testing, you know. Um, I only tested on portions, so I would test maybe, I would take a biology test. And then I would take a general chemistry test. I took them all broken up until maybe a month before the test to where I started taking full length tests. Um, I maybe took one full length test because it was, it was just exhausting to me. So I would usually take the natural sciences portion one day. Um, then I would take the PAT since you take the PAT alone. Then I would take the other two portions and knock those out. And I would take... After I finished my testing, I would take about a day or two really reviewing, getting into the questions. Um, you know, maybe if I didn't understand the question or if I didn't understand 
answer choices I went back and researched on. Why this answer choice was right, why this one was wrong. So you can really get the full view of the concept that they're getting at on these test questions. Because a lot of these questions can get very specific and you have to know you got to know the ins and outs of a lot of processes. So I think that's what helped me the most while I studied for the DAT. I interviewed three or four days before acceptance day. I think it might have been like December 10th and acceptance day was December 13th or 14th, something like that. So that was kind of nerve wracking for me, but I knew I would be the la I would be one of the last, you know, one of the last students to speak with them, so I had to leave a lasting impression. Um, with interview day, it really wasn't long. We did a lot of things. Well, we did everything through Zoom because the pandemic was still going on. Um, if you know anything about LSU, we have to do a chalk carving, and we have to submit that. We had to submit that through the mail. Um, a very nerve-wracking process, um, to say the least. But I did pretty well on it. Um, it took some practice. But... Going through interview day, I feel like about eight in the morning, we had introductions, you know, the professor spoke, we all introduced ourselves. It maybe was a group of 20. Um, they showed us some videos touring LSU, showing us, um, you know, new construction because we have a new sim lab and stuff like that. So it only took maybe about an hour. And then we took a break for a couple hours. And then when we came back, that's when we broke into our individual interviews. So my individual interview was about 30 minutes long, but interviewing with LSU was, it was very easy, it was very relaxing because I knew the professors already, we've already talked, had relationships prior. So the first um, interview question, um, they were just like, you know, you have to answer this, but why dentistry? You know, that's, that's going to be asked in every interview, I can almost guarantee you. But it was very relaxed. I was relaxed. It felt like I was talking to family. Um, I did get one crazy question, and I was asked, um, what was my favorite immune cell? And that one kind of threw me for a loop, but I kind of had, I was prepared for it because I saw that question on Student Doctor Network. So I had a pretty good answer um, prepared. But the interview went smooth. Um, I was very relaxed. Um, the professors were very relaxed because they had already known me. They've already seen my face multiple times. And we were just excited to, you know, see each other. Although it was through Zoom, we were still excited just to, you know, see each other because it's been a while. So I felt good leaving my interview and I knew that I would get in. Um, I would say know your application. Know it front and back um, because... Some professors will dig deep into your application. They'll ask you questions about things that you did seven, eight years ago. So just make sure you have a good feel for your application. Make sure you know your strengths and your weaknesses. That's also a question that's very frequent. Um, and be able to explain both. You know, I was able to explain my strengths um, as time management, you know, being a very punctual person from being a student athlete. And I also had to explain my weaknesses because... I had a couple C's in college, but most of my C's came in the fall semester, and that was during football season. So I explained that to them, and I told them, you know, as a dental student, dental school will be the only thing going on in my life. So I would have much more time on my hands, and I would, you know, I wouldn't be tied up as much, and I'd be able to really be dedicated to school. So I told them that my trend is trending upwards because I've never been um, just a student. So... I think that that was encouraging to them and that was a good answer for me. Um, and be relaxed, be prepared. Um, go on Student Doctor Network. They have a bunch of questions that people have been asked. I made a document for every interview I had with questions and then I answered them on my own, you know, filling them in and kind of just going through it. But you don't want to memorize them, I would say, because you don't want to sound like a robot. You still want to have human interaction, have a regular conversation, and show some personality also. You know, smile, laugh. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. The people that are interviewing you are humans too. Um, so don't be nervous. Just be prepared and have a good conversation with them. I applied to seven schools. 
I was interviewed by four. I was accepted by three and waitlisted by one. But I chose LSU right off the bat. Um, I had done a bunch of research on LSU. Um, the school is 15 minutes from my house. Um, being able to work with patients that are from New Orleans, being able to relate with them, being able to build clientele in your hometown where you plan to practice dentistry is an advantage. But most importantly, LSU prides himself on, you know, making sure every student is ready to go straight into the field once they graduate. We start clinic and start working on patients in our second year. So I'll see my first patient in less than a year now, and that's very exciting. And I feel like that's the best fit for me because I'm a hands-on learner. And the more experience I can get, the better I'll be. And I think LSU will mold me into the dentist that I want to be one day. So that's why I chose LSU. Starting off, I was nervous just because of the unknown, all the things you've heard about dental school, how strenuous it is, how, how much coursework you get, you know. It's all unknown until you go through it. But my transition wasn't bad. I have good time management. I'm a very punctual person. And I take good notes. Um, just me knowing myself and knowing how I learned the best aided me a lot. But what really made my transition smooth was my bigs. So I have a mentor that was assigned to me in every class. So I'm a D1 and I have a mentor that's a D2, a D3, and a D4. Um, shout out to Sam, Josh, and Hannah. Um, they're great. So any question that I have about class, um, they can answer it for me. You know, they're all so busy, but if I need help waxing up or if I need help, you know, preparing for a practical when it comes to cutting a prep or doing a restoration, you know, they don't hesitate to come help me, you know, giving me any pointers, um, which birds to use, you know, which way to drill, how to approach things and also how to approach things. And the difference between, you know, being in a simulated lab versus dealing with patients on the day to day. So my transition hasn't been that bad. The workload is definitely picking up, but it's manageable. You can do it. Um, usually class starts at eight and we finish at five. Um, I'm a late night person, so I'm usually up pretty late studying. So I don't wake up too early. If class is for 8, I'll wake up at 6.45 or 7. Um, I'll grab something quick to eat, maybe a granola bar, definitely some coffee. And I'll get out the door at probably 7.30 to get to class at 8. Um, on the Tuesday, we would have operative from 8 to 12, um, where we're learning how to drill on teeth, where we're learning how to do restorations. So the first two hours of class are usually a lecture, from about an hour to two hours. After we lecture, we go upstairs to the sim lab and... Whatever's in our lab book for the day, that's the project we have to work on. Maybe cutting a prep um, and getting it signed off, doing a prep and a restoration. Or it could be a project on actual um, extracted teeth that we've collected before school. So once we're done with that, we'll have a lunch break for an hour. Um, my apartment is only five minutes from school, so usually I come back and I grab something to eat and just relax for that hour. For the second half of the day, we'll usually have two lectures. Um, usually on Tuesdays, I think it's pathology and microbiology. So I have one class from one to three, and then another from three to five. And my day is over when it comes to school. Um, I'll come home, maybe I'll go to the gym or take a bike ride. I like riding my bike. That's a new hobby that I picked up. And I'll get back from working out maybe six, seven o'clock cook dinner, watch some TV, and relax for a little bit. Because I like to decompress once I get out of school. I'm not the type of person that can study, you know, after being in class from 8 to 5. It just doesn't work for me. So after that, maybe around 9 o'clock, I'll review some lectures, um, you know, watch some videos on a project we may have to do. Um, if I have to go back to school and practice for a practical, I do that around that time. And it all depends on what tests I have coming up. And I can be up from 9 to maybe midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, and then I'm toning it down and getting ready for, the, for whatever I have to do on the next day. But that's the typical day of a dental student. It's definitely the hands-on experience. Um, 
they kind of throw us in the water early. Um, we start off our D1 year in morphology, learning tooth anatomy, learning how to wax up correctly. Um, and then in the second half, we get into operative where we're drilling preps, we're doing amalgam restorations, we're doing composite restorations, we're learning about um, pulp capping, you know, what happens if you hit the pulp, what happens if you get really close to it, um, a lot of procedures. That's the most exciting thing is the operative because you actually, you know, you feel like a dentist and you get to practice those hand skills that you're going to use for the rest of your life. It's not easy, but it is rewarding and it takes a lot of practice. So actually today I'm probably going to go to the sim lab and practice because we have a practical and it's going to be pretty tough because we're cutting on the maxillary through a mirror, which is something that kind of haunts you when you first start doing it. It's a very awkward process, but with practice, you'll be fine. Know yourself. Um, know your strengths and weaknesses. And if you made mistakes in the past, like most of us have, be able to own it and be able to encourage, you know, people, schools that are interviewing you um, that you'll get better at those. Um, when it comes to studying for the DAT, it's a long process, but make sure you learn every process, that you learn your reactions, and know when you're ready. Only take the DAT when you feel extremely ready and prepared for it. Um, and don't be nervous, you know. When it comes to the interview day, you're being interviewed for a reason. You know, you're there for a reason. So have confidence in yourself. Um, be, a, be a good communicator and stay relaxed. Um, show off some personality, you know. If you have any crazy hobbies, um, be ready to talk about it. Because those things, that's what will make you different, you know. A lot of people are going to have higher GPAs than you. A lot of people are going to have higher scores than you. But you have to know what makes you unique. And when it comes to picking a school, pick the school that's best for you. You know, curriculum-wise, um, tuition-wise also, you know. But if you guys want to contact me and ask me any more questions, you can. You can email me at glennhazley at gmail.com. G-L-E-N-H-A-I-S-L-E-Y at gmail.com. Or you can send me a DM on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Team Hazley, T-E-A-M-H-A-I-S-L-E-Y. God bless.